So we just hopefully you just watched the video on uh, division algorithm, and leading into that would be, oh, uh, segueing from that would be getting into from the division algorithm to the remainder theorem. <clears throat> so the remainder theorem states that uh, the remainder of a division of a polynomial, so for instance, p of x divided by d of x, okay, so the remainder, which is that guy, right, the remainder uh, of that division, if d of x is the of the form x minus a, if then the remainder is equal to, is that right? The remainder is equal to f of a. So in other words, if I do the division, the remainder will be the same as if I took a func took the original function, I should say p of x here, because it's the original function, p of x, and put a into it. So let's see if we can, and I didn't prepare this, so let's see if we can create an example. So let's say my p of x, try to use the same list for f of x, uh, x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 7. And let's try to divide x minus 2. Now if this comes out to be a factor of that, um, uh, seemingly random and totally random, uh, if it works, oh my goodness, but I'm hoping there'll be a remainder. So we'll divide. <clears throat> so x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 7. I'm going to run out of room, right? So I want to uh, poopy face. I want to do that. And I want to do this kind of thing. Well, whatever. We'll use a different color. How's that? So if I'm going to divide this by x minus 2. So now we'll change colors. We'll use screaming green. So what would I have to multiply x to get x cubed? Well, I'd have to multiply it times x squared, right? So x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. And x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. Now remember, I'm actually subtracting this binomial. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0. And 3x squared minus a negative 2x squared becomes addition. So I have 5x squared. <clears throat> So what do I have to multiply? Oh, carry down the x. And what do I have to multiply x by to get 5x squared? Well, hopefully you know that I'm going to have to multiply it times 5x. So 5x times x is 5x squared times negative 2. It's going to be negative 10x. And of course, again, we are subtracting, so don't forget that point. And 5x squared minus 5x squared is 0. x minus a negative is going to be x plus, so I get 9x. Excuse me, wrong. I get 11, 1 plus 10 is 11x. Carry down the 7, and what do I have to multiply times x to get 11x? I'd have to multiply it times 11. So plus 11, and I get 11x. And negative 2 times 11 is negative 22. Of course, again, a subtraction, which is addition for this little guy here. This becomes 0, and 22 minus 7 is 15. And so I get a remainder of 15, right? So my remainder was equal to, maybe I should write it this way. Remember, remainder is equal to 15. So now let's go back to the original function p of x and determine what p of x is equal to if I put in, what was a? a is 2. So if I put in 2 and put 2 into the original equation, which was excuse me, original polynomial, x cubed plus 3x squared. So x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2 minus 7. Okay, so now let's just do this arithmetic and see that should come out to be equal to 15 if the remainder theorem is correct. By the way, it is, but we're just going to check it so you can see it happen in front of you. So 2 cubed is 8, plus 3 times 2 squared is 4, plus 2 minus 7, 8 plus 12 plus 2 minus 7, I get 8 plus 12 is 20, plus 2 minus 7. I know I'm doing all at once, or one at a time, 
It's not going to hurt too badly. And 22 minus 7 is 15. So look at that. P of A, or P of 2, is equal to the remainder if x was 2. And that's what the remainder theorem says. Now, that's all fine and dandy, whoop de doo But here's the, cool, here's the cool thing. If that's true, that means that if I put some 0 into my into my function p of x and it equals 0 that means that my remainder I shouldn't write it that way right that also means that my remainder is for that same value is equal to 0 if my polynomial is equal to 0 that means that a is a solution if it was an equation right and if the remainder is 0 it means it's a 0 uh, and it's a root. So all of that stuff ties together. If it didn't work out this way, there'd only be one way to figure out if something was a root, whether it was I have to do the long division to figure it out, or I have to do, uh, or in, if, like if this didn't match up, or I'd have to, uh, I could just substitute the number in, but it doesn't tell me anything else. But these things tie together. So that's what allows us to do a bunch of this stuff quickly. So if I really want to find out if 7... Uh, is a root of the polynomial uh, 7x squared minus, uh, let's say fourth, minus 3x plus 2. All I have to do is substitute 7 in for x and figure out if I get 0. If I get 0, it's a root. If I do not get 0, then root. If it's not equal to 0, not a root. Okay, that doesn't help us in some situations. We need to actually get the quotient, but if you had to do a quick and dirty, and sometimes the pro, the, uh, some problems that you need to do will just ask you that, is seven a root? Well, shove it in for x and see what happens. Zero, it's a root. N not zero, it's not a root, okay? That's it.